What's up, y'all? It's Flacco with Go Power Sports, and I'm here to tell y'all all about our Mega Moto Easy Angel Kit. Hey, Flacco. Poppin', Jason. Why the Mega Moto 80 mini bike? Well, I mean, I chose it because of its versatility. Whether you're cruising up and down the neighborhood or you're trying to make it to the top of the podium, you can't go wrong with the Mega Moto Easy 80. It's a perfect bike for any situation. Who's the Mega Moto Easy 80 kit for? This one's for the cruisers. Whether you're a young kid or you want to get into the sport, or maybe you're not so young and you just haven't been on the bike in a while and you want to take it easy. It's a perfect bike. What all comes with it? Well, it comes with this. Mega Moto mini bike frame with front suspension, 79cc engine, performance hardware and part. The tools you're gonna need for this are flathead screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver, three quarter open box wrench, two 13 millimeter wrenches, a 10 millimeter wrench, a eight millimeter wrench, just in case you need to mark anything or save any spots, Sharpie marker. It's always good to keep an impact in your hand to make your job a little quicker, a little easier. All right, so to get started, what we're gonna do is get our Mega Moto 80 out of the protective frame that we ship it in. If you look down at the bottom, I get started with the uh, 14 millimeter bolts. And they're gonna be tight enough to hold it together, but you should be able to just take the bolt off. It's gonna be a bolt at each corner. And one in the center. So that should give you a total of five bolts. Once you get all the bolts out, you'll be able to remove the top of the frame. Carrying frame, that is. Make sure your wheel don't fall out because it's kind of holding you. Your frame is holding your wheel in. Careful not to scratch your new bike either. From there, you're gonna remove your zip ties that's holding your forks in. You really don't wanna remove your protective foam until you get it out the frame, because you never know what could happen. Okay, now that you got your bike all free, I like to leave it in the bottom of the frame because it holds the bike in a pretty good position to work on. So from there, I'm gonna start with the forks. And to start that, I'm gonna be removing the zip ties from the neck of your frame. Go ahead and get your frame at your phone. Careful not to scratch it. Pretty, pretty powder coat. <clears throat> now that you got your front suspension all free, Go ahead and lay it back on the protective coating. From there, you're gonna need your, your suspension, front suspension bolt. It's gonna be inside of your hardware kit. Your hardware kit is gonna be located inside of your hardware box. So once you get your hardware box open, you'll find located inside your hardware kit, your clutch for your bike, your riser kit for your handlebars, and your Mega Moto plate. So get my hardware pack open, because I'm gonna start by putting the forks on the bike since it's sitting there. And you're gonna want your number plate brackets facing to the front of the bike. And what I do is just let that rest right there, match the top hole. Your suspension bolt. It's gonna slide right down. Then your bottom riser plate should slide up. And I only finger tight this bolt for now, just to hold everything in place. Next, gonna free up your handlebar. Rest right there. Next, you'll need your handlebar risers. To do this, grab one of your risers and your bars. 
And there's no top or bottom for your risers, so it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna set your riser, your bars and your bottom riser. Match it with your top riser. Make sure to hold those bars. Take one of your riser bolts, line it up. Then just to make sure everything stay in place, finger tight. If you want, you can go ahead and let those rest. And repeat with your second riser. Line it up, top riser. Line it up with the bottom riser. Riser bolt. Slide all the way through. Let those guys rest and finger tight. All right. Get those guys there. In order to tighten it, you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket and a 13 millimeter wrench. You want to tighten them in a cross sequence. And I'm still not going to go all the way tight because we're going to position our handlebars before we do that. But cross sequence. This part is going to be rider preference. It's all up to you on where you want your bars. Me, I like a slight forward tilt. It tends to be pretty comfy. And from here, once you get your bars positioned, you can go ahead and fully tighten. Tighten. After I get everything assembled at the front of the bike, I just like to go back and make sure everything is nice and snug. Give it a couple shakes, twists and turns. If you want, you can go ahead and install your Megamoto front plate or number plate. By doing that, you're going to use Two Phillips head bolts or screws and two rubber grommets. These guys screw in pretty easy. is going to come with well, the axle itself, two spacers, and one lock nut. So to start, we're going to remove everything off of the axle. The axle will go in by itself first. Spacer. So spacer first. Remember to turn your fork a little slightly just to give you enough room to slide your wheel in. And you'll know which way to install the wheel, just follow the tread on the tire. From there, just gonna wanna slide your axle through the wheel. So we 
got spacer, wheel, second spacer. Line that guy up. Slide him right through. Then you can go ahead and install your three quarter inch nylon locking nut. It's gonna be three quarter and a 15 mil. It's kind of good to hand tighten these too because you just don't want to over torque anything. Tighten. Once you have your front wheel installed, it's always good to give it a quick spin check. You want a nice free spin. From that point, we can go ahead and remove the rest of our foam and remaining zip ties. All right, so coming stock out your box, your Mega Moto 80 is gonna come with this chain guard. Well, installing your engine is kinda gonna be in the way, so we're gonna go ahead and take a Phillips screwdriver and remove it just for motor, in just for engine installation. All right, to get started installing our engine, what we're gonna do is get it out the box, and our first step will be bolting our engine to our actual engine plate. From there, the engine plate will be bolted to the box. So let's get our engine out the box. And what we have is a 79cc single overhead engine. It comes with two to four horsepower. With that, you'll get about 15 to 20 miles per hour. Nothing crazy, but it's the perfect motor for, I don't know, maybe small kids or older adults who just want to get out and cruise. All right, so what we're gonna do is install our 79cc engine onto our engine plate. I'm gonna start by just placing it onto the plate and lining up the holes. Just take a quick glance, make sure everything's lined up. And our engine plate is actually gonna come with the necessary hardware. I don't put any nuts on them to start. I start by just setting my bolts down in the hole just to keep everything lined up. All right. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put my nuts on the bottom of the bolt. All right, now that we got our engine onto our engine plate, your motor's not gonna fit into your engine bay with your stock exhaust. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is install our stage one upgrade kit, including our header pipe. When you start by that, I'm gonna remove my stock exhaust, which is gonna be two 13 millimeter bolts. Remember when installing your header pipe to always use lock washers. And they help prevent vibration. And when installing your new header exhaust, you'll be able to use a 13 millimeter socket on one nut 
on the inside nut, you're gonna have to actually use a 13 millimeter box wrench. That leads us to our stock air box. It's gonna be two plastic turn grommets. Move your stock air box. And inside you'll find one, you'll find two 10 millimeter bolts, which you will need a 10 millimeter wrench to remove. Pop that out. grab our 79cc air filter adapter and it's going to slide right onto the two holes there. The two 10 millimeter bolts that we removed are going to go back on. From there, we grab our intake or air filter. Some of these you are gonna be able to slide right on. Some of them you might have to loosen up from the factory. And it's gonna be a flathead screwdriver. Just so that we can slide it over our adapter. But you don't wanna remove it all the way. Just enough to get a little slack. <clears throat> Always remember to retighten. Make sure it's nice and snug. Then we'll come around to our vent hoses. After installing your air filter, you're gonna get your red shim, slide it down into your vent hose. It's not gonna be go, it's not gonna go all the way but the further the better. If you wanna look at that, it's only about that far. So once you get your shim installed into your vent hose, grab a set of cutters, just trim the excess. Excess. When the excess is trimmed, when the excess is trimmed, take one of your vent filters, insert it into the shim hole, Grab one of the included zip ties. Make sure this got nice and secure. All right, now that we got our air filter and our valve cover being installed, we're gonna go around to the clutch side so that we can get it started installing our clutch and our chain cover. All right, when installing your clutch, typically, most clutches are installed outboard, meaning the chain is gonna be on the outside of the motor, not in between the motor and the clutch. For this particular setup, we're gonna run our clutch inboard, meaning the gear is gonna be on the motor side. Just line up your keyway, just key inside the clutch. Slide it on like so. Then you'll get a Go Power Sports billet clutch wheel, um, clutch washer. And remember to always use a lock washer when installing your clutch. Torque it down. Once your clutch is torqued down, I like to go back just check for free spin. You want a nice, clean free spin, which that looks good. Once the clutch is installed, now I'm over, we're okay to go ahead and install our chain guard. And with this chain guard, we did make a slight modification. We notched it here 
just in order so that it will clear our frame, our A pillar. During the making of the video, we had to swap out our chain guards. This is our new short chain guard. You'll begin this with your kit. We will slide down, just let it rest. Finger tight. Make sure that both bolts are finger tight. You go ahead and torque down your chain guard bolts with a 13 millimeter wrench. All right, so now that we got our chain guard installed over our clutch, we're gonna go ahead and take our motor, carefully place it in the engine bay. Take our engine mount hardware and just the bolts. I'm going to sit down into the bolt holes just to make sure that the motor doesn't do any sliding and keep it in place until we're ready to torque it down. Now I'm going to proceed by just finger tightening. And remember when you, you're putting your engine plate bolts in, remember to slide through the hole that's on the other end of this. This is gonna be how you tighten the chain. Make sure those lined up. In order to install your chain, you're gonna start by finding your master link and removing it. If you want to get close up on your master. Master links are simple to remove. Just take a needle nose pliers, get behind the link. Pop them off. And when removing master link, remember to put it someplace safe because they are very easy to lose. All right, guys, so once you get your motor installed and you proceed to put your chain on, you will realize that the stock chain that's attached to the bike once you get it is actually too short. So what we did was include a, a already pre-cut chain that should be perfect length. Let me show you guys how to get it on. We'll take our chain. If you look here, we got a roller tensioner. We'll take our chain, go over the tensioner, on top, underneath, and around your clutch. Um, how I like to get around my clutch, I put it in the teeth underneath, and just simply rotate the clutch around. Once the chain is rotated around your clutch, come down to the back of the bike, over your top axle and sprocket around the bottom of the axle and sprocket. And from there, we'll place our master link back in. Um, one of my rules of thumb, when installing a master link, I like to take my pins and push out towards the outside of the bike. And what that does is put all your master link hardware on the outside of the bike as well. And that gives you easy access to your master links. And to get your clip back on is exactly how you took it off. There we go. Put the top of the chain. You may be able to pop it all the way on, you may not, because we still have to play with the tension there set the tension of the chain. If you're not able to pop it all the way on, get it around as much as you can. Roll your wheel in the opposite direction. And 
and it's gonna pop right on. All right, y'all. Right, At this point, we're about 90% done with our Mega Moto 80. Personally, I feel like it'd be a good idea if you get somebody like a neighbor or a close friend or somebody to come give you a hand, just as far as lining our chain out. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and give our engine guy, Master Tillerson, y'all may know him as Paul, bring him in and give me a hand with just lining the chain out and the performance side of our engine. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Paul, Go Power Sports. I'm here to help Flocka. Let's get this thing finished up. All right, so what I like to do is get the, uh, the engine loose but tight, so kind of snug, so it'll kind of stay in place once we move it and we can eyeball the chain a little bit. Uh, they have different tools you can use to um, make it perfect, but I've noticed if you just line it up with the back sprocket with the front sprocket, uh, it's, it's good enough. So we've got the engine pretty snug. All right, I'm gonna hold it there. You can go ahead and tighten it up, Flacco. Gotcha. It's best to keep a little bit of tension on the chain just to keep everything straight the way you want it. With this setup, there's an angle plate and the motor mount. So make sure you tighten both uh, to make sure it stays straight. Now that uh, you've got one of them tight, you can always just verify, just go and recheck it every time you tighten a couple. Sometimes just the way you're tightening them, it moves a little bit. So don't get too frustrated if it kind of gets off. Just once it's all snug, just recheck it. This one still looks pretty good. Yeah. Looking nice and straight down here too. If you still have a little bit of slack on the chain, which ours is pretty good right now, if you leave this in the loosest position as the chain stretches or if you're off just a little bit, you can tighten this up and it'll take the slack out. One good thing to keep in mind, guys, after you've rode it, probably the first, the first ride, maybe two rides, everything will be seated in a little bit, so you need to go back and check everything over. The main thing to check is the chain and the brakes uh, to make sure that they're still um, functioning good. Check the guide, check the motor mount, check the exhaust uh, studs. Sometimes these back off a little bit just from the heat, and it's always good just to check over everything front to back, but those are the main things to check. Paul, now that we got the motor down and snug, where do we go from here? Let's go ahead and put some oil in it. Let's use the break-in oil. Uh, since the motor's brand new, we like to use uh, the break-in oil to make sure that everything's seated and uh, you get the most out of the engine. Uh, we, we use the Tillotson oil, break-in oil, and then they have the uh, regular racing oil. But for now, we're gonna use the break-in oil. This kit comes with the angled plate. So with the bike sitting on its tires, the motor's gonna be leaning forward. So to put oil in it, we need to make sure that the engine is flat. You can do it however you want. Put blocks on the front wheel, put it up on the curb, where you have a motor or an engine stand that you can adjust. Adjust it until the motor itself is flat. Lean it over. So we use some wood and some parts around the shop. We got the motor pretty much flat. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat. You don't have to put a level on it or anything. Just eyeball it. So we're gonna start with 12 ounces and check it. Every time you change the oil, it depends on how much oil you drain completely out, how long you let it drip to how much you need to put it back. But on the dipstick, it's got a high and a low mark. I like to be about three quarters to the high mark. We're gonna be using about 12 ounces of oil. We recommend using the Tillerson oil. It has everything, all the additives you need is designed specifically for this engine. Not only that, I'm a racing guy, so I like to see what my motor puts out. The Tillerson oil, it gives you a nice translucent color so that you can see what any, if there are any shavings or anything. Impurities. Any impurities that you need and you, you know, you need to know about. That's pretty much it's Pretty good. Yeah, Roll it off. with it just touching it. It's about three quarters to the hot, right where we need to be. And that was 12 ounces, brand new engine. All right, y'all, so let's get a throttle cable on. First, we're gonna start off by disconnecting it. Still zip tied on. And 
when you get those cut loose, you'll see here that you have your kill switch controls, your wires for your kill switch, and you also have your throttle cable. All right, the best way to uh, get your throttle hooked up is run the wire through the guide here and it'll seat into this metal jacket. You'll loosen this metal or a Phillips head screw up and then you'll run the wire through the keeper here. Like so. Like so. This nut under here is the tension of the rod. Sometimes they may be a little bit too snug for this actuator to work smoothly. So just use a 10 millimeter, you're gonna loosen this up just a hair. Once this is working freely, what you'll do is you'll push this up against it, pull on this wire slightly, but you don't want to pull on it or affect it so this is already engaging the throttle. Then you'll tighten this up. This Phillips head screw will tighten down on the wire to hold the wire in place. Just get it real, not super snug, but pretty snug. You don't want this coming loose while you're riding. And then just get your throttle and just check to make sure all the movement on your uh, throttle linkage is working all the way. Always check for wide open throttle there. Yep. And make sure it returns back pretty smooth. Yep. If you messed up a little bit and you need a little bit more tension, you can adjust this, this uh, guide keeper here back and forth to give you some play. Y'all, here we are. We just finished our Mega Moto 80. We got it gassed up. We're gonna run it through a quick heat cycle just to break our engine in, make sure it's done safely. Um, if you take a look down here, a lot of people may not notice it, but there is a fuel shut off. You wanna cut your fuel on before your first startup. And also, it's a brand new engine, so you're probably gonna wanna choke it. So make sure that your choke is on before you start it as well. And remember guys, the first time you run it, make sure the back tire is off the ground or start it up against a building or a, a solid wall so in case it takes off on you. Fire and hold. Yeah. You think? Okay. And don't forget guys, sometimes you may have to adjust the idle up or down just a little bit. Sound good. So normally how we like to do it here at the shop is on your first startup, let it run for about five minutes just idle. Uh, there's many ways to break it in, this is just the way we do it. And the five minutes is dependent on the temperature outside as well. The up guys up north is maybe a little bit longer. Oh, we just did our first heat cycle. Letting it cool down. Letting it cool down a little bit. I'm gonna grab my helmet and gloves. Remember safety first. We're gonna go on this first test ride. Remember guys, on that first heat cycle, you're gonna let it warm up for a couple of minutes, five or so minutes, depending on the temperature outside. Then you're gonna let it cool down all the way back down to about 70 or less, depending on how cool it is outside. After that, you can go ahead and fire back up give it you know, 30 seconds to a minute to warm back up, depending on the temperature outside, and take it for an easy test run. Don't get on it hard that first couple of rides. Let it break in slowly. y'all i'm telling you it's a perfect bike whether you want to get started or get it back going how to feel real good real responsive it's smaller than what i'm used to but i mean 
It's a fun little bike. Now, thanks for tuning in. You can get your own Mega Moto 80 kit at the link below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let us know what kind of mods y'all want to see done to the Mega Moto. I'll let us.